In this video I want to show you how you can specify a simple latent state trait model in M+. As a reminder, latent state trait models were developed in the late 80s and early 90s by Rolf Steyer and colleagues in response to the person-situation debate in psychology where the question is, are psychological constructs more state-like, more driven by situations, or are psychological constructs more trait-like, more uh, driven by person-specific effects? And so latent state trait models allow us to measure to which extent constructs are traits or states or a mix between both. And so here's a prototypical latent state trait model for two time points where we have three indicators at each time point. The indicators are the same indicators at both time points. We have first order so-called latent state factors and in the latent state trait model the first order state factors can be seen as a function of a common latent trait factor Xi and a time-specific state residual factor zeta t. And so when we implement that structural equation into this first order latent state model, we get a second order model that has state and trait components. And so then the trait factors are second order factor. The loadings here are the same. They are both fixed to one. And then we have also residual variables, zeta1 and zeta2, that characterize situation-specific effects and person-by-situation interactions. So in this model, the trait factor is a second-order factor, so it's a second-order factor model, and the state residual factors are those residuals for the latent state factors. So they reflect time-specific residual variance, situation variance that is not accounted for by the common trait factor. Now I want to show you how you can specify a model like this in the m program. Here you can see I have um, the first order measurement model exactly like in the model on the slides where we have our first order state factors tau1 and tau2. The loadings here assume to be the same across time for measurement equivalence. And then next I specified the second order factor model which um, works also with a by statement. So I just introduce a new name, xi, for the trait factor and I specify that xi is measured by tau1 and tau2 with a loading fixed at 1 for both time points. In this case it is a necessary constraint because there are just two time points so the latent trait factor has only two indicators and then we cannot estimate those loadings freely. If we had more time points then those some of those loadings could also be freely estimated. Here they both have to be fixed and then the trait factor accounts for that across time covariance of the latent state variables and so that's the variance that is consistent across time. We can also estimate the latent trait factor mean as a common mean assuming that here there is no mean change across time that the trait stays stable across time. And we have full or strict measurement equivalence. The intercepts are also set equal across time and also the measurement error variables, variances here also constrained to be equal over time. Not all of these constraints are required in the latent state trait model, but if they work, then it's nice because it makes the model more parsimonious. So let's take a look at the output for this model in M+. We can see the model fits the data very well and um, that is not a surprise because I simulated the data based on exactly this model so it should fit in practice. Things are not so easy so there are complications typically in practice where a model with a single trait and unidimensional factors typically does not work so well for latent state trait analysis because we have to take into account item specific effects. This is just a very simple model that assumes that the indicators are homogeneous, that they don't show indicator specific effects across time. And since I simulated the data in this way, in this case this works. Should be enough to give you the basic idea here. And so we can see that we have our first order factor loadings and then we have the second order factor loadings which are both fixed to one in the unstandardized solution so that's not very 
interesting. What is actually more interesting here is to look at the standardized solution where you can find both the standardized first order loadings. You can see the standardized first order factor loadings are all very high, close to or above 0.9. That indicates that the indicators are highly reliable. So high first order standardized loadings indicate reliability. If you square those loadings, then you get the reliability coefficient for a latent state trade model. That would be the R squared in the M plus output that we will see below. So that shows the indicators have good reliabilities because these values squared are still high. And then you can also see in this example, the second order standardized loadings are also very strong around 0.95 and that indicates that the trade accounts for a lot of variance in the first order state factors and that points to a very trade-like construct. Those second order factor loadings squared give you the consistency coefficient for the latent state factors and the consistency coefficient is a measure of how much trade variance or the proportion of trade variance in your um, state factors. We'll see that also when we look at the R squared. So scrolling down, we can first of all look at the R squared for the observed variables and you can see those are the standardized loadings squared and they are between 0.8 and 0.903. So this means that between 80% of the observed score variance and 90.3% of the observed score variance is reliable variance. So these ones here, these R squared values for the observed variables can be directly interpreted as reliability coefficients. And it shows you that um, there's high reliability. Oh, there's actually one that's lower, 0.975, but that's still above around 0.8. So roughly between 80 and 90% of the observed score variance here is true score variance, is reliable variance. The remaining 10 to 20% um, are, are accounted for by measurement error. Furthermore, we get the latent variable R squared, and those are equal to the second order standardized factor loadings squared. You can see they are 0.89 and 0.916. So this means that between 89% of the true score variance and 91.6% of the true score variance can be explained by the trade factor. So most of or 90% or above of the true score variance is trade variance in this example. Only about 10% of the true score variance here is situation variance. So this points to a construct that does not um, depend very much on situational influences. So here situational influences would be very minor and that could be a personality construct with high stability like for example intelligence or something like that where it's mostly a trade-like construct with very little influence of the situation. So this shows you how you can specify a basic um, latent, latent state trade model in M+. If you're more interested in latent state trade models, I offer a workshop that goes into more details for these models that also shows how you can analyze indicators that are not perfectly unidimensional, how you can account for indicator specific effects and other issues, um, how you can compute con uh, co consistency and occasion specificity coefficients for other models. So check out the description for other workshops and subscribe to this channel, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see you next time.